This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to speak about the need to control punitive damages and explain why courts should limit them and why it's time to put a stake through the heart of the tort of bad faith and its need to assess punitive damages against insurance companies. The U.S. Supreme Court has clearly stated that, quote, punitive damages may be properly imposed to further a state's legitimate interests in punishing unlawful conduct and deterring its reputation, close quote. This is BMW of North America versus Gore. These damages often exceed the fines assessed by the state if the same person had acted criminally to damage the plaintiff. The skills of plaintiff's trial lawyers have convinced juries to award damages in sums that exceed the annual budget of Greece. The jury assesses the enormous damages because it becomes inflamed by the wrongful conduct of the defendant, and agrees that the lawyer's suggestion that the jury should, quote, teach the defendant a lesson, close quote, to stop it from doing the same to others. The argument has been successful in thousands of suits brought from Vermont to California and from Florida to Washington State. For years, punitive damages awards were unlimited. A $40 compensatory award resulted in a $5 million punitive damages verdict. Some juries assert billions of dollars in punitive damages with no constraint from the courts other than the wealth of the defendant. In 2003, the U.S. Supreme Court limited punitive damages in the United States when in State Farm Mutual v. Campbell, a, the U.S. Supreme Court, by a 6-3 vote, overturned a $145 million verdict against State Farm. The Supreme Court concluded that a punitive damages award of $145 million, where full compensatory damages were only a million dollars, is excessive and violated the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. Justice Kennedy, writing for the majority, limited the ability of state and federal courts to award huge punitive damages awards and concluded that it was improbable that a punitive damages award more than a single-digit multiplier of the compensatory damages award would seldom, if ever, pass the due process test. The Supreme Court in BMW v. Gore set forth specific tests that must be met before punitive damages could fulfill the requirements of due process. The State Farm Mutual v. Campbell case arose out of an automobile accident where one party was killed and another severely injured. The Campbells, insured by State Farm, attempted to pass six vehicles on a two-lane highway, failed, and caused the driver of an oncoming car to drive off the road to co escape collision with the Campbell's vehicle. The Campbell's only had $25,000 coverage per person and 50000 in the aggregate. The Campbell's felt they were not at fault because there was no contact between the two vehicles. State Farm ignored the advice of its adjuster and counsel to accept policy limits demands and took the case to trial. The verdict at trial was more than $180,000 and the State Farm appointed counsel told the Campbells to put their house on the market since they would need the money to pay the verdict. State Farm refused to pay the judgment and to fund an appeal. The Campbells lost their appeal and entered into a settlement with the plaintiffs where the plaintiffs agreed to not execute on their judgment in exchange for an assignment of 90% of all money received in a bad faith action by the Campbells against State Farm. Before suit was filed, State Farm paid the full judgment. At trial, the plaintiffs brought in evidence of actions of State Farm in first-party cases across the country and third-party cases not similar to the Campbells 
auto accident, and other evidence not related to the facts of their case. The Supreme Court found that State Farm's handling of the claims against the Campbells merited no praise, but concluded a more modest punishment could have satisfied the state's legitimate objectives. Instead, this case was used as a platform to expose and punish the perceived deficiencies of State Farm's operations throughout the country. However, a state cannot punish a defendant for conduct that may have been lawful where it occurred. State Farm Mutual v. Campbell created a major precedent, changing limitation on the right of a jury to assess punitive damages, settling limits on total amounts that can be assessed, and the types of wrongful conduct a jury can consider. In determining the constitutional maximum for particular punitive damages awards under the Due Process Clause, we and all litigants are directed to follow three guideposts. One, the degree of reprehensibility of the defendant's misconduct. Two, the disparity between the actual or potential harm suffered by the plaintiff and the punitive damages award and three, the difference between the punitive damages award by the jury and the civil penalties authorized or imposed in comparable cases. Punitive damages must, according to the U.S. Supreme Court, bear a reasonable relationship to compensatory damages or the plaintiff's actual or potential harm. Courts must ensure that the measure of punishment is both reasonable and proportionate to the amount of harm to the plaintiff and to the general damages recovered. Juries, unfortunately, are often misled that the poor victim of an insurer's bad faith will be able to enjoy the just compensation after paying a contingency fee to counsel and state and federal income taxes. The plaintiff's recover usually little or no portion of the punitive damages. In my opinion, although punitive damages serve a public purpose and deter wrongdoers from wrongful conduct, the use of punitive damages in insurance bad faith cases has, in my opinion, done little to deter wrongdoing by insurance companies. Therefore, it is time to put a stake in the heart of the tort of bad faith. Insureds who are wronged by their insurer should limit their coverage to contract damages. They should be compelled to waive the tort and sue an assumption. If the tort of bad faith must exist, it must be applied equally. The abuse of the tort of bad faith has become so extreme that the tort must be eliminated or otherwise be made fair. This video was adapted from my book, Insurance, Bad Faith, and Punitive Damages Desk Book, available at the FastCase.com bookstore. This was also adapted from my blog, Selma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL, Zalma.com slash blog. Please tell your friends and colleagues about this blog and the videos and let them subscribe to the blog and videos. They're free. And if you're interested in obtaining more information about insurance, insurance law, insurance fraud, and insurance claims, please consider subscribing for a very small fee to my Substack publications. And also please Follow me on X at the Zelma. Thank you for your attention.